What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning, so come by and say hello. All right, guys, this is my first video back after over a week. Now, for all of you who sent me very kind messages checking in, I appreciate that more than you know. So thank you for checking in. Uh, but I had mentioned it on a couple live streams. I don't think I mentioned it on a video. So if you don't attend the live streams, I kind of said that, you know, the, with the Thanksgiving holiday coming up here in the U.S., I had family coming into town and I was just going to unplug. And I know that it was not the best time. In fact, it might have been one of the worst times this year for Splinterlands uh, just simply because there was so much going on. There's a lot happening right now. I am still personally catching up with all of it. But uh, first things first, let's do the five biggest takeaways from the town hall. I finally got a chance to watch that and catch up there. This is the one from Monday, November 27th, the day before Land went live. And of course, I'm recording this a couple days later. So Land is already live. Seems like we're doing pretty well. Uh, but here are the five things that stuck out to me the most. There are other content creators that put together full summaries. Just my little disclaimer as usual. But let's go ahead and jump right in, shall we? Okay, number one. The flywheel has officially started. I feel so vindicated by this because I think I put out a video maybe two weeks ago. I think after Aggie started burning SPS for DEC, I was like, okay, well, a flywheel is officially here. People have started burning it in mass because they realize that they need it for either land, rebellion, or both. And so I guess it's official, official now because Matt during the town hall said that he believes the flywheel has started. Now, that being said, he's been very careful to say that, you know, he thinks it's going to be a long time for us to still eat through all of the excess resources, assets, tokens, whatever you want, right? whatever you want to call. It. Obviously, in this case, it's the DEC tokens, right? So there's still a lot that we need to eat through. But the total DEC in circulation has come down significantly and now is starting to go up over the past couple of weeks. So we may have seen this circulating supply of DEC actually bottom out. And I'm not talking about this from like a cycle high or low. I'm simply talking about the fact that if people need DEC and we know that it's going to be the case for land, for Rebellion and other sets in the future, that everything that's going to be sold in DEC or for DEC tokens, we may have seen the bottom of that circulating supply because we'll only continue to need more and more and more over time. Now, yes, will we continue to burn some? Absolutely. As we go through new games uh, or I guess new assets or things within the game that will be added in could potentially burn DEC, stuff like guild buildings and land and who knows what else. But uh, on the whole, you know, the, the flywheel has officially started and we are moving forward with, uh, I guess, a new era in terms of how DEC circuit circulating supply is going to interact with the game economy as a whole. But it is exciting times, you know, uh, whether whether, you know, <laughs> I guess just looking at this over the next 18 months, because that's kind of like the window that I'm looking at Splinterlands as well as like the broader Bitcoin bull run potentially, right, with the uh, the having in April of 2024 and then, of course, the ensuing kind of like 12 months after that. I don't know. We could, we could see some really, really exciting times ahead over the next 18 to 24 months. And the flywheel starting now, meaning that people have started to burn SPS for DEC and Matt, you know, kind of making it official official is really exciting. So that is number one. Let's go ahead and jump down to number two. So... I've been really, uh, you know, openly critical about research tokens and the fact that there is not being any kind of like alpha given, right? And I've been talking about this for a while. And to Matt's credit, you know, he's got the Land 2.0 white paper uh, almost done. He wants to release a draft of it before the end of the month or probably th later this week. So that may be coming and that may give a little bit more insight into what research tokens will be. But uh, for the most part, it's just been like, man, with land going live, I just thought that 1.5 specifically, right? With 1.5 going live, I really thought that we needed to have some kind of information. And, you know, Matt Matt said that it's coming. He played coy also and said, you kind of need to trust, you know, if you, if you trust what, what is going to be coming in the future of the game, then research is going to be really important. He says he personally is planning to go after research quite heavily. So, you know, again, I personally did not think that that was going to be enough to pull people into it. But there was something that Matt said during the town hall that really stuck out to me. And that is, you know, in the future, you're going to need research tokens for a bunch of different things. And you cannot purchase them. You have to go and earn them. They're going to be soul bound, right, to a certain extent, at least from what we understand. And you just, you're going to need to have them. You can't get them from anybody else, which means you need to put in the work. It's like a proof of work type of situation, right? Uh, not not exactly, but you get my point. So in a way, I was just like, okay, that 
that actually stuck out to me. Now, granted, I, I'm a little lucky in the sense I, I don't have I don't have many uh, plots, right? But I'm a little lucky in the sense that the, with the keep, I get a little mix of everything. But even still, I was looking at this and saying, well, I, you know, there's two plots that I want to obviously build up in the future and potentially expand my land uh, holdings in Area 51 or just overall. And so it's like. Maybe I should start focusing a little bit more on research. Maybe if I, you know, the SPS payouts are okay right now and they're only going to continue to diminish. Maybe research is something that is worthwhile to look into. And uh, I, I'm holding off right now just because I want to wait and see what happens with the white paper, uh, the 2.0 white paper. But Overall, that really stuck out to me, and I wanted to share that with you guys as something that I think was worthwhile in case you are kind of on the fence about whether or not to do research. Uh, okay, number three, Matt referenced the voucher peg of roughly 200 DEC per voucher, right? We've seen this ever since DECB early in 2023. Obviously, Rebellion is kind of pegged 20 to, uh, you know, I, I was going to say 20 cents, but it, it really is at peg 20 cents per voucher. Uh, which is equivalent to 200 DEC. And of course, we have this soul bound card unlock with the voucher discount of like 200 DEC as well. So he obviously we're not there yet, right? D, uh, vouchers, I think, are like still like around or even less than three cents right now. And we're printing 40,000 per day. But his plans in the future, again, he's not saying he's going to try and get vouchers up to 20 cents. But what, t there's, there's a couple things that I want to really explore here. First of all, he mentioned that he mentioned the soft peg of 20 cents, which I personally found a little disappointing because I was like, I want vouchers to be worth, you know, 20 bucks again. I want them to really be an access token rather than a discount token. And he used that language once again, which uh, I guess Aggie had kind of said, you know, months ago about the vouchers are kind of like the discount token of the ecosystem. I, I know it's just semantics, but I really prefer them being an access token. I feel like you should only get vouchers or you should use vouchers to get access to all of the coolest stuff. You will need them and there will never be enough for all the people who want to have them. Obviously, that's not the case now. That has not been the case over the past 18 months. And the plans moving forward are that Matt really wants to change that. So vouchers on land, land 2.0 specifically, he seems to be hinting that there's going to be a lot of utility for them there. Not only that, you know, with uh, potential, the, the burn event, with the, um, uh, mini set that we may end up doing with uh, all kinds of promo cards in the future, they're really trying to take a closer look at how to get vouchers as scarce as possible. And I know Matt's talked about that before, but you know the the new wrinkle in this most recent town hall was really just digging in and kind of hinting at land and saying that there's a lot of things that they're considering and wanting to do with vouchers on land to get it to that level. And keep in mind, the way that he views it is that vouchers are free, right? And I've talked about this before. He's talked about this before. If you are participating in the ecosystem, really in any way, right? But just at the basic level, if you're playing games, you're winning SPS, you're earning SPS, which automatically gets staked, which means you're automatically earning vouchers, right? So in any shape or way that you are participating in the ecosystem, you are most likely receiving vouchers in one way, shape or form. If you're holding uh, node licenses, if you're, you know, have LP rewards, uh, staking rewards, you're earning, you're playing in brawls, right? Guilds, all this stuff, all of that leads to SPS and what SPS is uh, essentially giving you as a kind of like proof of time is these voucher tokens or are these voucher tokens. And so therefore, you know, they shouldn't really have a value, but obviously what they wanted to do was provide some kind of liquid way for people to show their proof of time. That's what vouchers were essentially supposed to be. Obviously, they have not been able to get vouchers to the scarcity level that we all desire, but it sounds like 2024 is going to change that. Now, again, going back to my first point with this, it's a little disappointing if they're just shooting for 20 cents, but you know what? 20 cents is like a 6x from here. <laughs> uh, it's actually more than a 6x from where we're at at 3 cents. So, if they can get vouchers to 20 cents, I'll be happy. Obviously, during hype times, I would love for vouchers to go well above that as somebody who gets a lot of vouchers. But on the whole, you know, I just I just appreciate the kind of renewed focus on getting vouchers more utility and more value over time. Uh, okay, number four, looking forward or ahead to land 1.6, it sounds as though the grain LP has already, uh, you know, they've already started coding it. Now, what's funny is, you know, Matt, I'm glad Matt kind of caught himself. Actually, he he like literally put Farpetrot out there and, and it was almost like, oh no, don't do it again. I was like, I, even though I was listening on the replay, I was like tensed up because somebody had asked like, you know, when can we expect the grain LP? When can we expect certain aspects of 1.6? 
And so Matt, you know, um, you know, he put Farbitrod. I don't want to say he put him on the spot, but he's just like, "Hey, Farbitrod, do you want to let everybody know what the progress has been so far? Or do you want to give an estimated date?" And Farbitrod, you know, shout out to Farbitrod. Farbitrod was like, "Uh, you know, let me just put it this way: we have already, I've already started coding for it, uh, and now they're they're back to a point where the coding or the dev work is ahead of creative. Creative is, has been working on Rebellion. Now, I actually take that as uh, a little bit of a." A little bit of a, a negative, and again, this is not nothing against Farb, nothing against Creative. It's just one of the one of the bottlenecks that we saw in the past was the devs were super far ahead of things, and it was Creative that was running behind. Obviously, shout out to the Creative team; they've they've been hard at work on Rebellion, and Rebellion is going to be coming out next week. But I'm almost a little concerned now, where it's just like, okay, you know, Farp is a beast at coding. He's going to get super far ahead, and maybe he might be ready. But if Creative, hopefully, once Rebellion's done, but you know, if Creative is going to be behind on this, I don't, I don't know how much time this is going to take. So at the end of the day, the only update that we really have for the Grain LP, which is going to be the first aspect of 1.6, is the fact that the coding has started. So we can already take a little bit of excitement and enthusiasm from that. But kind of looking at the history of this. The, the dev work has never really been the bottleneck. It's usually been creative whenever, you know, uh, whenever there's kind of like a disparity there. So I don't know if, you know, Nate's ever going to come on and talk about where creative is at on the grain LP, but I would say this, I, I don't, I cannot imagine the LP being something that requires like a crazy amount of creative assets, right? It's a DeFi platform. You're going to skin it with some cool lore, some cool pictures, like the UX will need to be on point, but on the whole, like they don't need to make a whole story. I mean, I know knowing them, knowing Nate and, and the team, they're going to make an awesome story around it. But my hope is that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't get delayed so much because of, you know, the backlog the team has had with the rebellion and then switching back over to this. So Again, I have no idea. I'm just I'm just kind of talking from my own personal perspective here. No idea how things are running in the background, but that has what is been said so far from Farp in terms of where the Grain LP, uh, you know, kind of progress has been. Um, okay, and then number five. This is a very hot topic. There's even a proposal right now, which I'll cover in a separate video, just because there's a bunch of proposals that I need to catch up on. But you know, Matt was talking about how the reward, uh, like pack rewards in chest. They've always been a given, and he kind of addressed this. He even apologized. I appreciate that, uh, that he kind of like said that he dropped the ball and was focused on a bunch of other things. But the future of where, you know, packs and reward chests are is that the default should be no packs, especially now considering that the DAO is in charge, essentially, of what we do with Rebellion Packs, right? The DAO is like a partner in this sale. And so obviously there's a proposal out there right now to try and figure out where we stand on that as a community. But Matt took more of a kind of black and white stance on what the default should be. There should not be any packs in a reward chest by default. If we as a community choose to add them in, whether that's to all chests, whether that's to all formats, all leagues, whatever the case is, that is something that the community needs to come together on and decide. So I know there's a proposal that's active right now. I don't know when it ends, but uh, at this point in time, unless it is something that says like put packs in chests at these levels, my assumption is that we are going to see no packs in reward chests at the beginning and at the sorry at the launch of Rebellion, which is coming in less than a week here. So that's actually a, a good thing. And, and Matt did you know clarify and said, look, this is all changeable. We can always add them in later. We can always take them out later. But the default is going to be that they are not going to be in chest until the community as a whole can come together, the DAO, right, as a whole can come together and decide on what this looks like so that we don't devalue the packs. And I know a lot of people will be upset about this, and I'm, I'm ready to, to hear the, some of the comments on it. But you know, with with where the approach has been for Rebellion to really keep the value there, you just don't want a bunch of cheap or free packs being given out. Now, I am someone that's going to suffer from this, right? Because I was like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to build up my collection, my Rebellion collection through all the free packs that I get from the thing, right? Those are the only packs that I'm going to I'm going to really uh, buy, right, or, or use to build my collection. If that ends up not being the case. Again, I know I'm just one person, my perspective, maybe people will think that I'm just, you know, coping along for the ride, but I'm actually okay with it because it's like, I will feel more inclined to buy if I know that nobody is out there on the secondary market, just dumping packs that they got for free or that they got for cheap in the same way that we know that the airdrop conflicts are going to keep, hopefully, you know, hopefully keep pack uh, prices and card values relatively high, right? We know that the, the, uh, 
reduction in overall uh, bonuses should help with that as well. So on the whole, I, I like the fact that we're kind of tightening all of the different knobs when it comes to preserving rebellion card and pack value. And I don't mind if we start all the way at one end and then maybe start to loosen some as we go along if we see that what has been done is super effective, right? Maybe we can start to loosen things along the way. So on the whole, you know, I thought it was a really fun town hall. It was a little bit shorter and maybe I think they even called it like a special town hall just because it was right before the launch of land. Uh, I don't know what to expect with next week's town hall, but there's a lot going on in Splinterlands right now. So I'm going to go ahead and just end this video here. These are the five things that stuck out to me. I listened to it on fast speed though. So as I was trying to catch up and, you know, try to get a couple listens in. So if I miss something, please do let me know. Uh, otherwise, let me know what your comments are. Let me know what your, your thoughts it doesn't necessarily need to be on the town hall itself, but just with where Splinterlands is as a whole. And, um, you know, last thing is it's going to be back. I'm excited. I'm super excited for where things are at rebellion next week. Land is going well. And, uh, you know, it's a good time to be in Splinterlands right now. So that is all I have for you guys in this video. I will catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.